When is suicide the only option? Never. Suicide is never the only option. No matter how dark, no matter how bleak, no matter how far, no matter how frustrating, no matter how much, it seems that the future will never be good. Suicide will never, ever be the only option. In our part of the world, suicide is rarely discussed, but unfortunately, in today's world, news of people committing suicide is a regular occurrence. My experience with suicide is one I want to share with you today. Have I ever contemplated suicide? No. Have I ever had a close encounter? Yes. I was having a conversation with a dear friend and we discussed the struggle with suicidal thoughts. My friend mentioned that he was having dark thoughts and dark moments and things were just not going the way he expected. And sometimes in 2019, as he was driving on Todd Mainland Bridge, a thought came to him that driving straight into the lagoon would end the hurt, the struggle and the pain. But the thoughts of his family, his children and people that loved him came to mind and he decided that he would keep fighting this battle knowing that the future will be bright. Today, he's on a better path and things are gradually falling in place. We sat down and had a long conversation about this thing called suicide and how it can creep in on people, even people that we see as strong and courageous. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. When the thoughts drag you in, sucks you in, you lose focus of how good the past was, how the future is just around the corner. The thoughts drag you down and make you lose focus of the door handle, the door that opens to the light. You forget that all you have to do is stretch further. The thoughts keep you in your present state of mind, the present state of mind that is difficult, and dark, forgetting that is only a phase, it will surely pass. If only we can find strength, close our eyes and reach a little further, grab hold of the door handle and pull it down, open the door and behold the light. During the dark thoughts of suicide, one must remember one's loved ones. You must remember that nothing is permanent in this world. So, nothing bad lasts forever and nothing good also lasts forever. Obstacles are part of the journey. We must look out for them. We must remember that this is something that can creep up on anyone and distract you from your focus. Suicide also hurts those we love the most. Years after a loved one has committed suicide, the family left behind finds it difficult to heal and there is always no closure for them. If anyone is going through this process, I will advise that you reach out to someone that you love or someone you can talk to a professional can even help you. Please know that you are not alone and you can reach the Lagos State Suicide Helpline. Remember, suicide is never the only option. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, interesting. <laughs> no, um, I think uh, conversations around suicide very personal. And that's because I almost committed suicide in 2013. Oh, dear. And usually when I talk about it, I, I'm invited to speak about suicide. I like to dwell on the solution. Oh, okay, really? From experience. I point. want to point out two things okay. that I feel can help somebody escape suicidal thoughts. Okay? The first thing there is that, that the person should have a great vision. Now, let me talk about great this. Vision. Why do most persons commit suicide? 
because they are so caught up in the present Presence frustration mm -hmm. that they cannot see a future. Mm -hmm. oh. So they don't see a future playing out for them in a favorable position. So you say, nothing is there for me, so let me just die. But this is what vision does for you. Vision keeps your focus in the future. Yeah. So, for instance, I won't have a vision of becoming Nigeria's president. Amen. Okay, assuming. Amen. <laughs> of becoming Nigeria's president. And I believe that God has called me to transform Nigeria. That is the vision. True. When I pass through economic frustration, or maybe I'm heartbroken, or I'm jobless, when I match joblessness, being broke, or being heartbroken to the vision or the grand vision of becoming a president, I will see that that present cool frustration thing. is not yeah. enough to jeopardize the future yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the first thing. The second thing is for people to cultivate a selfless thought pattern. Okay. Most persons yeah, who commit suicide are very selfish in their thoughts pattern. It's about sorry, them. Boy, me, me. I'm, so I'm heartbroken. I'm broke. Uh, I don't have this. I don't have that. Yeah. When you think no. about other people, family, friends, proteges, your mentors, mother? and all that, yeah. the yeah. tendency to I'll commit be suicide will be low. And I think True. adding to your solutions, I, 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 I'm looking at one thing that, listen, every human being needs... We draw strength from two ways. One is internal strength, True. and the one is from the outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the internal strength to me comes in two ways. There's a personal one that comes from experience, like the vision you have and everything. Mm -hmm. And the second one is the spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual in the sense that you are, you know, a lot of people will not even contemplate suicide because they feel, how can you take a life? Yeah. It's okay. impossible. Mm -hmm. So their brain is shut down against it. Now, that's from the inside. From the outside is the family. You see, we were not created to live alone. Mm -hmm. Whether you are married or not, you are created to be in a society, mm -hmm. have a group of people, mm -hmm. not gossip friends, mm -hmm. but yeah. a group of people that you can rely on. Mm -hmm. You see, there were times in my life where I got so broke. But one thing, I always look at and say, one thing that held me on was that if anything happened, I will just go back home. I will just go back or go to my parents. If I stay there two years, I know I'll bounce back. Even yeah. Shola is saying, where is home? Shola, you're laughing here. Yeah, so. <laughs> now, I found that so funny. Um, but I think that, you know, uh, this topic is probably more suited for my son, who is a mental health practitioner. Okay. But I think, you know, from my little experience, I've had, you know, loved ones, you know, cousins, relatives who have, you know, taken their life uh, from suicide. Mm. Uh, so it's it's an area that really you know like it's it's very deep. I mean, I always say that when I when I even look at the methods that they use to commit suicide, if somebody hangs themselves, I'm like thinking, man, that person must be so brave, you know. Yeah. It just really? goes to show yeah. you that sometimes that people are just at the end of of the road, and the only thing they want to do is send you know go out in like a blaze of smoke, really. Um, mm -hmm. For somebody to, to to do those kind of things, but, but Shola, also I think I it helps when Shola? there's a lot of family support. Like Kaude yeah. said, that he, he can actually go back home. So basically, Kaude is not at the end of the road yet. That's but Shola, you Kaude said something. You, you, you mentioned something that for many who commit this they don't they don't even they don't see any options. Anything, yeah. But Shola, um, and but, it's sometimes because of the way they've been conditioned as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but you mentioned that you have family, close family, uh, that uh, yes. you know have gone out through suicide. And I want to ask, because I don't have somebody so close that has actually gone out like that. What is the healing process like after that? For the people left behind after the process? How do they find closure? How do they heal and move on? You know, it, it's the most difficult thing. And this, I think this is one of the things that should be, should be sold to people who are suffering from True? depression. Yeah, the people you live Because behind. I remember an episode that happened to me a few years ago. A cousin, cousin of mine I lost a, a daughter through suicide. And I remember going through the entire ceremony and, you know, the funeral. And, every, and, and I know her mom, mom was really struggling for answers, you know, really struggling to say why. You know, and, you know, it, it, the, the pain that it leaves behind, I think survivors of suicide victims should be made to talk a bit more. more about especially in a Nigerian society where people always kind of push everything to the back. That's Honestly, exactly. we yeah, really need should, to talk about to suicide more. And of course, I think we're still going to look at this topic and we're probably going to look at it from another angle. Another Maybe angle, yeah. um, the people left behind mm. after suicide. I think that's something we really should consider. It is. It, okay? It's, it's, uh, it's, so, it's important. Yeah. So, so yeah. we'll continue to discuss suicide at least on another date. Mm -hmm. Social media feedback. Esteemed viewer, 
Your contributions are integral to this program. Please keep sharing your thoughts on everything we discuss here. On the previous advocacy on the need for boys learning to cook, Otolo Unnewi says, you are right. Boy needs to cook, not only women. I myself also cook, even more than my wife. I love cooking, and it started from when my mother was alive. Beautiful. Emu Owobete says, I love the atmosphere of patriotism in today's show. It only depicts the strong desire to continue fighting for a better Nigeria. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate NG. Shalakuti is up next after the break.